Good morning and welcome to Beginning the Day with God on Thursday the 24th of August. We opened our worship this morning with the hymn, The Lord Will Come and Not Be Slow. Shine on us, Lord, like the sun that lights up day. Chase away the dark and all shadow of sin. May we wake eager to hear your word. As day follows night, may we be bathed in your glory. We continue our morning journey through the second letter of Peter. Today, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. Dear friends, this is now my second letter to you. I have written both of them as reminders to stimulate you to wholesome thinking. I want you to recall the words spoken in the past by the holy prophets and the command given by our Lord and Saviour through your apostles. Above all, you must understand that in the last days scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, where is this coming he promised? Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. By the same word, the present heavens and and earth are reserved for fire, being kept for the day of judgment and destruction of the ungodly. But do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping his promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, he is patient with you, not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. Thanks be to God. Now, our reflection. The theme of our reflection this morning is the Lord's patience. Peter writes to remind believers of the message that came from holy prophets, completely reliable, spoken somehow from God, to recall to the apostolic teaching originating from Jesus. This message appears to be about the last days, the end of this world, the final deliverance of God's people. Peter then picks out one or two emphases of that instruction. First, and most importantly, scoffers will come in the last days. The New Testament thinks of the last days not as the final few, but rather those days ushered in by the resurrection of Christ and until his return. Some unbelievers, not all, will ridicule the truth. They deride the idea of the second coming of Christ. How do you answer such cynicism? How do you seek to persuade others of this truth? Second, we are encouraged to realise the Lord's ability to fulfil his promise. After all, by God's word, the whole of creation came into being. By divine fiat, the world of Noah's day was destroyed. It's the same divine word that sustains the world until judgment. The creating word, the judging word, the recreating word, all assured and certain because this is God's word. Why not reflect on the word of God and what that means? How significant is it to see it in several aspects? Third, we are reminded to remember that with the Lord a day is like a thousand years and a thousand years are like a day. Scoffers measure the credibility of God's promise of Christ's return by the apparently interminable slowness of its fulfilment, 
as some of us no doubt sometimes do too. But the Apostle is adamant. The Lord's desire is that everyone might come to repentance, not wanting anyone to perish. And if that means patient delay, then so be it. It's a mark of tremendous grace on his part. Does our witnessing show the same remarkable patience? How might this be seen in practice? The Apostle wrote this to stimulate wholesome thinking, healthy, sensible, helpful thinking. There was and there still is some irrational thinking about the Lord's coming, incoherent of the gospel and of the Lord's love. Peter simply reminds us that Jesus will return again. That's as certain as God's word. His patience and the apparent delay give humanity time to turn to him. You could turn this thought into prayer for those you know and also for those you don't. Amen. We come now to a time of prayer for the worldwide church. And we pray at this time that the Lord will increase our faith, help us to grow closer to him as we live, as we pray, and as we worship. We make this prayer for ourselves and for our own communities, but also on behalf of the Diocese of Ewa in Nigeria, in the Lagos province, and all Christians in that place. In our prayers today, we also give thanks in our own parishes here for all those who offer welcome in our churches, for our teams of welcomers and sides people, and for all those who offer, offer hospitality through serving teas and coffees after services to helping support some of our fundraising initiatives and welcoming everyone into our churches. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We join together in the Lord's Prayer now, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Circle us, Lord. Keep strife without, keep peace within. Keep fear without, keep hope within. Keep pride without, keep trust within. Keep harm without, keep good within. Lord, may we walk in the hope of your kingdom. Fill us with your light and love. Be with us all through this day. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. The grace Amen. of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, be with us all. Amen. Amen.